Emotionally, I don't think anyone was quite prepared for what it was. stop and it's instrumental this is still like the intro and it's like and then I go to the just writing for that long. And... Getting something that feels new and feels fresh and feels like you've pushed yourself to do something outside of your comfort zone or outside of what you normally do ends up being kind of the most rewarding. A lot of times when you're writing a song, you hit like a wall, like you know the song is good, you know like you like what you're writing. And then some songs like just like come together like instantly. You just know right away. And that was happening. The day-to-day -day consisted of staying up very late, waking up very late, <laughs> eating kind of whatever we like put together with our like very average or below average cooking skills. We'd spend the whole day just writing and then when we would finish probably around like one or two, we'd put on a couple like horror movies. We had been running these songs every single day for hours and hours and hours, and finally by the time that Jonah and Amias got up there, I pretty much had like lost my voice from singing so much. It was cool because they, they had already heard a lot of the songs, but to, to hear them in this like revised state, I think like kind of brought new life to them. There wasn't much time to be thinking about the portrait songs because as soon as we got back from the writing trip, we ultimately went into sold out or that it had so much fan appreciation because it was like all of us just like on the road with our, with our friends. The dynamic always has been great. We usually uh, find a sleeping buddy on the first night and then it stays that way and you know unless we're late to something which I guess does happen often uh, I think we're in pretty good spirits. Oh, 
sometimes like forget to take it in, you know, it's like 30, 40 days of like being on the road and every stop starts to blend into each other and you're sort of in a rush. You have to wake up at nine to get to the next city. I really have to take like my health seriously and I can't have as much fun as like the other guys. So when we got to Atlanta and it was the last show and I knew that all I had to do was give that one show like my all. It was so much fun. Boy, I don't, I don't we're gonna do we're gonna do OD takes, so I know, so let's just do like three takes together. We didn't have much time to prepare. We got home from tour in like two weeks. Yeah, we were straight in the studio. Starting off in a public high school's basement recording a record to getting a couple days at a studio to getting two weeks straight book at a studio. It felt like a beautiful part of our artist journey. The gear is incredible. Lots of older outboard gear that just sounds great. We got to pick an amazing mic for Ben Rutter's vocals that really complemented how he sounds. I think we ended up using an old Norman 67, I believe. There's actually so many people in this industry to learn from. There's so much we haven't done yet, and there's so many ways of thinking about writing music that we don't know. And Charlie showed us that. I mean, to start do or die, he was like, who's someone that's been inspiring you lately? Someone said Prince. So we started the drums with Prince, and then he said, what is something that Prince wouldn't do? And none of us have thought about music that way. Like, let's start with an inspiration and then do the opposite of what we would do. That's such a unique way of thinking that we're gonna take with us forever. All of these people are very much like curators of the good stuff that you do that might like slip through the cracks if there wasn't a person there to tell you otherwise. Today is Thursday. What I wanted is the track. And I need way more than 10. A wall of sound. We got in the studio, we spent countless, countless hours for every song. Just dialing in sounds, specifically drum sounds, because, you know, we didn't use the first. Recording all together in a room is very important to orders of change as a band and to our sound. It always has been, and I think that is the thing that will continue to set us apart from other other artists in the future. I'm Dave Posey in the studio today. Legendary. All of me. John Legend. Out here we got Jonah and Will, our fearless protectors. Where are the hits? Where are the hits? Where are they? Yeah, just if we're going for the body of that snare, yeah. we can't we can't deaden it too much or it'll lose like all the depth yeah. and it'll just be all like okay. paper papery sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I yeah. like I like the I mean yeah. I, I hear that 80s song like hella deaf on I yeah, love yeah. working yeah. with Dave Tones. Yeah. Maturing in this record process was realizing yeah. how how good uh, Tyrone and the way are. Okay, here you go. Here's that drive reference again. We were working on writing and recording Turn It Away for months. And everyone was really nervous. Everyone was like, where is this song? Like, I don't hear the final product. And then, you know, we need some information. 
resources leading up. Sometimes when we're demoing, before the idea is even completed, we'll just really try to make it sound good and polish it and produce it. And for him to do the exact opposite with us was challenging, but it was, I think, such a beautiful thing to see a song come to that high level of a final product and us doubt it the whole way. At the core of all of our records, it is just the four of us playing in a room on our instruments with crank amps. If you took everything else away from us, we'd, we'd still be happy just uh, just doing that forever. Yo, we out here making what I wanted and shit. What I want. First single yeah. of the album. Need. What did you want again? Tilla lost his drum throne. And uh look here. Is that a drum throne? What do I want? Big <laughs> button top. You don't need to. It's just from here. Uh, okay, cool. I'm gonna start like this. Pull can you pull me up? Yeah. Well I can I can stand up. Yo, dude, that's oh, fucking killer, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Be careful. You see it, like, tilted all? <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me do this. Thanks for sharing that. I didn't realize how nervous I was going to be until I, you started approaching some of the bars. And I was like, oh, my God. You plan on, like, cutting between performance there right now. It was like wearing like an inflatable like sumo wrestler suit into uh, into a small club or something like that's what I felt like. Put your hands like around his shoulder and be like, yeah, just like it existed without the whole outro bit where everything you kind of think the song's over and then the guitar comes back in like that got kind of tagged on very very late in the process because it was just kind of like a one of those like why not choices. I would turn it up. And rolling whenever. Don't don't look at the camera. And I look at me. Alright now you're you're, you ready? you're giving somebody a drink. You ready? One, two, three, slide. Let me see a good a good shake out of that. <laughs> No, Ben. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> hey, we went out to a bar first, which was the first mistake. By the time we ended up doing any action shots, it was like one o'clock in the morning, 10 degrees outside, middle of summer. Wait, I want to play the song. I mean, these these single covers were so fucking hard. Honestly, like getting into like mixed media, it was really tricky uh, for me, and. It was nice that, you know, Amos was so patient and, and was so good at editing that we yeah. were able to, like, you know, find a, a really, I think, fitting combination in that end. But um, when we were doing the Hollywood Baby video, I got this, like, kind of meta character we came up with. It's like, this, like, really struggling artist, and it was really fitting at the time. So I was, like, really kind of struggling on, on um, you know, ideas and kind of making these pieces work and come alive. Time to be alive. We're screaming all alone.
Dive video. Ben had this really cool idea of going back to the financial district. It was really important to me that the visual didn't take itself too seriously and that it also authentically showed off Ben in some way. And ever since I've known Ben, he's been like skating. So it felt authentic to us to, to shoot some sort of like skate vid and brought some friends into it as well. Me, Ben, and Ben all grew up. It reminds us of, you know, running around and being stupid ah. kids in middle school and high school. And I think the, the skateboarding thing also played into that. Like, it was very adolescent and kind of... Uh, it was really cool to blend in a time where I don't think we knew music was what we were going to do into our music. Four dollars! You know, it's, it's the reality of being a professional musician that the job is not done when the song is done. But... We will go to really, really ridiculous lengths for music videos. definitely evolved primarily due to the set list. I build them and I had spent like a lot more time thinking about how to make it grander. It was really cool to like take some of those old songs from Into the Rift that might have gotten tiresome and almost rewrite them in a way. It felt like a amalgamation of all the best songs off of both the run was the most smooth run that we'd ever went on, and the show felt super cohesive. You have this band that's operating like a business with the mentality of a sports team, and it was just like, we're, we're growing. We kick this door down. It's gonna go yes, and All I don't support this. I think we're there. We're so close, Primmies. <laughs> yeah, open that shit. I turned around and I heard the door like. But how do you even lock it, dude? <laughs> dude, he figured I it out. Oh! Did I get it? Not realize I got it. <laughs> To see that like in places that we have never even heard of, like Lawrence, Kansas, they're screaming the lyrics. Like we go to Virginia Beach and Do or Die is not even out yet and people are singing the lyrics. And it's so nice to play new material and I'm just excited to watch it grow because you release the record or you have the record done and then you tour it, you tour it again, you tour it again and it totally evolves and becomes a whole other beast. That's it. That's the amount of times that we have left for shows and forgotten very, very important pieces of equipment. It's not once, it's not twice, it's not three times. You know, that's well said. When we arrived at this airport and they forgot the entire Apollo at the crib. All I gotta say is I would not forget basically the most important part of the operation. I need you to Uber pack us in there. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, that's gonna be a fun. <laughs>
See that? What? It's empty. To have ACL be the first festival was a dream. I've been hearing about that festival my my entire life. It was weird being on the other side of things. And I'm here with Quarters of Change. Playing a festival is a lot like being the opener on a tour in the sense that you get all these new people who haven't heard you before. But it's different from an opening tour in that there is so much pressure. Like you get 45 minutes, you're going after and before like incredible artists everywhere. Oh my god, that's my favorite song of all time. Oh my god. Yeah, so nice to meet you. There's nothing like it. It feels different than like I think any, any other show. You know, since we put out T Love, Joe Jonas has been in contact with us as a as a major supporter. What's your favorite? It's really strange and awesome that uh, someone that you know we as kids like watched as like a rock star like admire your music, like be a fan of your music. Yeah, so I guess when it when it came time for them to hit the road and go on tour, he just slid in the DMs and asked what we were doing during that, that day, and uh, and he was like, "Do you want to go to the show?" And he said, "Yeah." Let's do it. Where are we, Jasper? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Where are we, Ben? MVP Arena, the greatest city in the world. Albany, New York. Thank you for our first arena show, Albany. Shut you out, baby. You know, like, a lot of times, like, something that feels massive can, can feel small when you, when you get on the stage, but going into the arena um, and looking around was like, oh, no, this is, this is massive. on that stage and you know looking out it's just like it's like a it's like every musician's dream you know Concert toms are, are just the, the mic. The only thing that's being tricked is the kid who's there. He's, uh, he's, he's told us a lot of different things. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I love that we're so good. Oh, it's the tattoo. All right, all right. Morgan has a magic. Yeah, there she goes. Bye. I found about Quarters Change over a year ago, last March, and I fucking fell in love with them immediately. And I'm on, like, what? This is show four? What was it four or five? Five, five maybe. And you drove five. I drove hours? ten hours. We flew here from um, Charlotte. Charlotte. We're but both we're... in the middle of finals right now too. Yeah. But I found QOC like in 2021 with you know a classic Kiwi, and then I saw they were touring, and I was like, I have to go. And then I went, and it literally like life changing concert. I've been to like four more, or this is a fourth after that one since. So, so I've seen them in Atlanta. Tampa, Orlando, uh, Rockwood. This is finished left. 
Well, we're the ones who make fun of the band. I think everyone will see that the power of the four of them together is greater than each of them individually. And I love them, and I don't tell them that enough. Why do you like quarters of change? I don't. You don't? I love quarters of change. That's right. <laughs> Uh, show me the gloves. Wait, please. Yeah, she looks great. Yeah. Three days no gluten. Oh, yeah. Looking much better. There's something coming in there. Look at this. Look at this fine creation. Yeah. I never thought I'd right, This is the part of the reality show TV show where the cameras slowly go out the room and you cue the sexy. Oh, close the door. Close the door.